and confirmation. Oh, okay. Okay, and basically you're probably wondering, uh, now that you've been inspected, what happens after the inspection? The inspector will typically, they'll do an exit interview, and during the exit interview, they'll discuss with you any problems that they may have encountered during the inspection. And also, you need to remember, if you don't understand something that they're saying or um, a problem that they, that they think is a problem and you don't think it's a problem, you need to ask them to clarify what exactly is it they mean. And, and maybe things can get resolved there instead of, you know, in your letter. And the inspector, they may ask you some more information to be provided. If something wasn't clear, if they didn't see any records, um, then they'll probably ask you to provide a copy of, of the report or the record to them in a, in a request letter. Or the inspection may identify that some things need to be adjusted. In some of the cases, uh, the inspection identifies a problem with the nutrient management plan. For example, there may, may be a mortality management um, issue that's written for a broiler operation, and it doesn't work very well for your layer operation. So they may tell you that that needs to be revised and updated. And also the... Um, Another common problem at poultry operations is the lack of mortality records. And even though that the, the records that you are, your current, you know, the growers currently have for, for their integrators, they keep a copy, of, they have a copy of those records. So you may want to, before you hand them over to your integrator, take a copy of them and put them in your nutrient management plan. And some of the com common problems that are, that are typically found on, on the farm are that um, the operator, sometimes they won't have a rain gauge or there isn't a staff gauge at the lagoons or the nutrient management plans aren't being followed, or records for mortality, nutrient spreading, uh, the land agreement for third party land application, uh, sampling data, calibration of your equipment. We may ask for copies of those to be supplied before we issue the final report. And the inspector may also tell the producer what he can expect to happen next, uh, especially if, you know, if we're seeing that you're in violation of your permit, if there's problems or issues on site, what corrective actions will be taken, and uh, the expected time frame. And I'd like to introduce to you our next speaker. His farm is a century farm in Tennessee. His great-grandfather bought the first hundred acres of their farm in 1901. He and his father are both UT agriculture graduates. He has two sons who are studying agriculture at Virginia Tech. And the farm is a state-of-the-art dairy farm. It has an above-ground concrete manure storage tank. The cows are housed in a compost bedded pack barn. It has a direct tanker loading upon milking system. Their cows are bilingual. They listen to country and Latino music during their daily milkings. His farm is a family farm in Loudoun, Tennessee. His father Wife and children are actively involved in the farm's operation. I pre present to you Steve Harrison, who will speak on his experiences with being inspected. Thank you, Lisa. Oh, you're welcome. 
uh, I was inspected in March of 2008. Uh, this was an unannounced inspection. Uh, Lisa McKinley with EPA and uh, a couple of you from uh, TDEC, Tennessee Department of Envir Environment and Conservation. We spent about six hours one Friday afternoon there in March, and um, it involved uh, reviewing records, going over the nutrient management plan, uh, inspecting the facility, uh, mortality management, and, it, and we spent a lot of time uh, me asking questions and uh, getting good answers and feedback. So it was a very uh, educational learning experience for me as a producer. After the inspection uh, in March, in the, uh, and, and we did go over some things that I had wrong at the time of the inspection uh, as far as record keeping, how to improve mortality management. I was in the beginning the fifth year of a five-year nutrient management plan. Uh, the plan was basically fairly obsolete because of some things that have changed in, in uh, evolution of the, of the farming operation. In August, I received an administrative order. And the way I understand an administrative order, it's basically telling you what you've done wrong, what you need to do to correct that, and what kind of timetable you have to make these corrections. And uh, <clears throat> everything was fairly straightforward. Uh, uh, my, my nutrient management plan was old. Uh, my record keeping needed to be uh, more thorough, updated. I needed to do a better job of that. Um, some chemical storage formaldehyde that I use occasionally for foot baths needed to be stored better. And those were the things that were pointed out in this administrative order. Um, I asked for one extension mainly to get the new nutrient management plan uh, uh, done. In the meantime, I had feedback uh, from Lisa McKinley with EPA on our new nutrient management plan and how to uh, uh, make it most effective and, and most useful. Uh, since then, we've had a, we've asked for another extension, and we're about to finish that thing up. But there's been a lot of give and take uh, from uh, EPA uh, help with the nutrient management plan and and help uh, with this uh, solving these problems. And also, I've had input from the uh, Tennessee Department of Agriculture on this. So uh, your feedback the, is, is not real fast always after uh, an inspection, but it's most educational, most helpful, and uh, it's, it's, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a real stressful thing. It's just something you have to work through, and uh, you want to be sure and get all these things right when you're, when you're redoing them. But my experience has, has been, uh, you know, very, very smooth on getting that done. Thank you. Thank you.